in one of the other short videos I made on aligning the shoulders and the hips, you can use that information in both Tai Chi and Qigong. And it actually affects what you do in both Tai Chi and Qigong immensely. Because when the shoulders are in the correct place, your hand positions and hand movements, both in Tai Chi and Qigong, will alter. So let's just do the shoulder exercise first, which is lift your shoulders, pull them back, not too much, relax your neck, and now let the shoulders settle onto the groove of the hips. So that settles down. You're breathing gently. Now, that has an effect on where the actual head of the humerus, the head of your upper arm bone, where it sits in the shoulder. Because a lot of people, when they are over computers, they've got their arms reaching forward all the whole time, are actually pulling the, the head of the humerus here. They're pulling it, not exactly out of the socket, but it's rotated more to the front of the socket, and there's more stress, more stretch on the back, and more compression on the front. Maybe only a minimal amount, but that take, that's what tends to take place. So let me just do that again and get back to our starting position. So now what we're going to do is, in a Tai Chi form and certainly in a lot of Qi Gong moves, if you now just lift your arms up ahead of you, wait a second, let me do it first, you're going to go like this to here. That's all you're going to do. You're going to lift your hands up to there, but you are going to make sure that the head of the humerus rotates within the socket rather than pulls forward to lift the hands up. So you're doing an internal rotation within the socket rather than a pushing forwards of the humerus head. Okay, so lift, pull back, settle slowly, and then whenever you want, just allow it to rotate within the socket. And back down. And you can apply that principle to almost any arm lifting in Tai Chi and Qi Gong. Now, I know that some teachers will say that when you lift the hands up ahead of you, your back should go backwards. In other words, we're balancing the front and the back. Something happens at the front, something happens at the back. And it's true. That's absolutely what happens. But not at the expense of lifting up here and you're pulling your arms forward and therefore your back is you start to overstretch the back because all we're doing is we're creating huge tension in the body and we need to try and do the movement of lifting the arms up with minimal temp tension and yes there does need to be a feeling of the spine going back there very slightly but actually it will almost automatically happen by itself you just need to be aware of it because any weight at the front of your body in, you know ahead of you here is going to have to have a corresponding action behind you, otherwise you're going to lift your hands up and you're going to fall forwards. That's what's going to happen. So just all you have to do is be conscious of it and be really careful that you don't tense your neck. That should stay relaxed the whole time. Very easy to start gripping it up. Okay, so we give it one run, you lift your shoulders, you pull them back and you allow them to settle. And you just stay there for a second, relax your neck, Okay, arms are going to lift ahead of you. Keep your neck relaxed. Rotating in the socket, the head of the humerus rotating in the socket. And we've done it. Okay, so let's just do it. Actually, I said it one time only, but let's do it again because I want you to be more conscious of your back and I didn't give you enough notice of that. So lift, pull back, and then you're going to lower. Careful with your neck, and we're going to lift up and rotate in the, the head of the so in the head in the socket and now think about what's going on in the upper spine don't force it back just notice that something perhaps is going on there and just lower 